Well, hi, Robert Knoll. You're at the Guitar Zone, and you're in for your third lesson today of 53. A lesson every week for a year. So this is the third lesson, right? So what I want you to realize is right now it's about reviewing. I don't want to rush you into too many things because I really want you to get to feel the pick good. That down up that we started doing, holding the pick well between the index and thumb and getting the right, you know, feeling with that pick and feeling your down up balance in the hand. Look at my right hand. It's kind of folded up almost like a mitt. I'm just not letting my fingers hang. But I've got them relaxed. But I've got a very relaxed hand. And, you know, you're getting that down up picking and learning to change strings. And you know the names of the strings. Now, I really hope you got E, A, D, G, B, E, E, B, G, D, A, E. You really have to know the notes, those open strings, okay? Okay, so we also started working with the left hand and it was about really about finger placement. I wanted you to really learn to place your fingers next to the frets, up against them. Hug the frets, so important. And that you're on the tip portion of your fingers, you have your wrist out, we know that the wrist moves and it's a relaxed hand also, okay? We want to learn to move that wrist as we move around. But Important, too, that your fingers stay set up. They're not flying away off in space, far from the string. The closer to the string, the easier it is to place a note down, a finger down. But you have to do enough of this, practice this enough, to where it becomes natural. So that's a lot of these first weeks, is trying to get the right hand and left hand to feel more natural. It's about the repetitions you do. It's just like working out in a gym. You got to do reps, but you have to be mindful that you're not practicing something wrong. So I really suggest this week that you review a lot. Even go back to the first video and second video and watch them some more. Play along with those videos. I know I talk a lot and I'm showing you things, but you can always stop them and work on something and keep refreshing yourself this week. Well, this, this week's lesson is going to be uh, focused on tuning your guitar. I thought this is really important by this third week that we really talk about tuning. We haven't done that and it needs to be talked about today. Your guitar is very important that you're in tune. If you're not in tune, then you know your ear isn't picking up the right sounds. Your guitar isn't going to sound like mine and you need to be in what we call standard tuning. That's 440 uh, hertz frequency for your open A string. So there's what we call a standard tuning. You might want to look that up. Your piano when it's tuned. Okay, there's different tunings, okay, but we're tuned to 440 standard tuning. And I wanted to tell you that there's different kinds of tuning. We're going to go through manual tuning today, so I'm going to take the time to go through the manual tuning. But I want you to realize that there's these little tuners out there that uh, you can attach onto your guitar and you get a, a view of them and when you look at these tuners see if I can get this one on you you have a visual and it actually when you hit your low E string it tells you it knows you're hitting your E and it says E on there you can see that when I it's telling me E and you're getting an indicator that the bar, when you get the bar in the middle, the, in this case a blue bar, then you're in tune. And you have to learn to bring your strings up and down. You want to do it very carefully at first. And so you start hearing how your guitar is tuned. But visualizing it is a really good thing. These little tuners are 10, 15 bucks, okay? Music stores have them. They're online, eBay. This happens to be a snark tuner, okay? Very popular these days. Keep it on your guitar and you just got to turn it off, okay? The other kind of tuner, a free tuner for like your iPhone, your computer, or your iPad is the, what I use is called the Boss Chromatic Tuner. It looks like the foot pedal that I have. This is a free, your Boss, B-O-S-S, -S, chromatic tuner. 
and it works much the same when I when I hit my my D string or my A string it tells me A and you see that little green light well when that green light in the middle stays there and doesn't go red then you're in tune but you have to let your note ring and hit the note loud enough to where the iPad or your iPhone picks up the volume, picks up your guitar. Now I'm electric so I'm a little bit louder but you could do this with an acoustic guitar or classical guitar. So this is a great way to learn to tune. You visualize, you hear the frequency, you have a visual. And I suggest that every guitar player have a tuner as such as the chromatic tuner. Um, this is actually called a Boss Chromatic Tuner TU dash 3w waza craft looks kind of cool you can customize the look and all kinds of great things but anyways i wanted to show you that and uh there's lots of different kinds of tuners electronic tuners these days and some guitars you might even buy a guitar that has a tuner built in you've got to learn to work that tuner and learn how to work it like i said most cases you have to hit the the string loud enough and let it ring so that it registers Okay, so I want to be able to hopefully get into a few different things today with you, but I wanted to talk about uh, also about uh, the manual tuning, okay? So we're going to take for granted in manual tuning that your E string is in tune. Now, if we if you check this on a tuner, you know your E's in tune, you can practice manual tuning. But to tune my A string, I need to go to an A on my E string, my low E string, which would be the 5th fret. So I'm going to take my 2nd finger and go to the 5th fret, and I'm going to hit that A note. We've got E, F, G, A. See, you are going to learn some notes today, right? So... 5th fret A. When I hit that A, I'm going to hit my open A with it. I'm going to strike them together. And because I'm in tune, they sound the same. Now, if they didn't sound nice like that, that A could sound flat. And it would sound like that. And I'd have to tune it up, away from me. Tune the, the pitch, the A string. So we have to get good at using our tuners, whatever you have, three on one side, three on the other side. So you want that sound same. If you go too high, it's gonna sound really bad. So I have to bring it down to like get them to match as close as my ear can. I'm very close. So you get to be meticulous about this by practicing tuning. Tuning takes practice, and you do need to learn manual tuning. You may not always have a tuner, and this is how we, one of the ways we start to train our ears to hear pitches. So now I've got those two pitches, A on the fifth fret E string, and the open A string, I've got them matched. Now my next string I have to tune is my open D string. So I'm going to bring my thumb down one string, still on the 5th fret, but I'm going to hit that D and then hit my open D. Well, my A is, sometimes weather and humidity changes the strings, or you might have new strings, and they will stretch and go out of tune very easily. So once the strings are stretched, then they should be staying in tune better. So I'm getting my A, okay. Now that sounds just like my D, that's really close. I could check it on a tuner to make sure, but that sounds pretty good to my ear. Now that I've got my A and D string tuned, I need to get my open G string tuned. Okay. Well, that sounds pretty good. I'm hitting my, my fifth fret on my D string, my fourth string, and I'm hitting my open G string together. Those two notes, those two strings together. And that sounds darn close. That sounds really close. That sounds good. I'm gonna leave it. 
Now I need to go to my B string. I want to tune my open B string, my second string. So I'm going to go to my third string G string, and this one breaks the pattern again. I'm going to my fourth fret, which is a B note, and I'm hitting my open B. Well, let's see. That sounds pretty good. I might be a little bit sharp. I'm going to bring it just slightly down. Well, I'm going to bring it back up. A little bit. Sounds pretty close. Now, once I'm satisfied that those two notes, those two Bs sound right on my fourth fret, I go back to the fifth fret from my first finger to my second finger, and I've got to hit my fifth fret E on the B string and hit my open E, my first string, because I want to tune that note. So if that wasn't in tune, it might sound like, like that, or even worse. And I'm going to tune away from me and carefully until I get those two, two notes to sound the same. There, now we're getting there. But if I go too far, then it's, once again, not going to sound good. We're going to hear the dissonance. That's pretty good. I'm going to check it, my tuning now. That sounds pretty good. What if I use the, my tuning chord? This is my special tuning chord that I invented because if we have E and A, we know how they sound. Now I've got my first finger barred. From the D string, G string, B string, and E string, I'm barring, laying my first finger down. That's called a bar. We're going to be doing bar chords in the future, but here's your very first introduction. Second fret barred four strings. If I hit those strings, okay, now I hit open, E, A, second finger, I'm sorry, not second finger, second fret, first finger. 2nd fret 1st finger, 2nd fret 1st finger still, but that last note, I'm going to put, I'm going to bar my 4th finger on 2 strings on the 5th fret. Now I'm going to put that bar back. So I get the same notes, I get an E, an A, and just so you know, this is an E on the 4th fourth, um, fourth string, D string, but I'm on the 2nd fret with my 1st finger. And then I have another A on the G string second fret. And then my fourth finger is barred. So I get this wonderful A chord. If I strum it from the fifth string, it sounds really great. Because these are all A and E notes. Anyways, that's a little trick. If I ever ask you to play your tuning chord, that's what I want. Okay, so wow. So we've learned the method here. This is the standard. This is our, our basic method of tuning. Back in the old days before electronics, we would get a pitch pipe and you'd blow that pitch and it would usually be that open A pitch on the pitch pipe and you would tune your string and then you would go about tuning your other strings. Some guitar pitch pipes would have a wham for an E, A, D, G, B. But that was before electronics started coming in. And then the electric guitars, we started getting foot pedal tuners and, and such. These days they're on our phones, our iPads, our computers. Uh, you can buy the, uh, the little ones like I showed you, the Snarks. Chromatic tuners is another thing you'll research uh, or that you can look for when you're looking for a, a tuner. I think it would be great to have a portable tuner that hooks on your guitar like the one I showed you to start and have one on your iPad and phone. It's a really great thing. And you're going to learn to do the manual tuning on the 5th fret, then it goes to the 4th fret, and then back to the 5th fret. So we really, you see I'm still checking it because my strings might be stretching a little bit. Okay. 
So there's also a chromatic tuning. We're not going to go into that today because it's a fancier kind of tuning, but when we learn to just tap on the strings, we get these bell tones. Those are called harmonics. I'm at the 12th fret and I'm putting my third finger on just, I'm not pressing, I'm on top of the fret. There's a strum. But we learn to tune our E's by going from the 12th fret to the 7th fret. And then we go from 12th fret to 7th fret, 12th fret to 7th fret, then we go to the E string, 7th fret to the 12th fret to get the B, and then we go from E, E 7th fret to E 12th fret. So those are what we call bell tones, or harmonics. Very important you know that word, harmonics. And there are some guitar players, some styles, that they learn to play total solos and songs with harmonics. Really cool sounding. Something you might want to investigate. It might be part of your style in the future. Okay, wow. So we got into the tuning lesson. So you're going to always check your guitar. It's the first thing you do. When you pick up your guitar and you get setting comfortable with it, you get plugged in, whatever, or your acoustic guitar, classic guitar, you want to go and am I in tune? You want to ask yourself that question. You want to be patient. And you want to go about maybe hitting a couple little chords that maybe you've learned. But you want to go through the method. The manual method. And see if all your notes sound like they should in unison. Then go to your guitar tuner and check yourself. You've got to explore. You need to go on a guitar tuning exploration or an adventure. <laughs> a safari of tuning. A mission to tune your guitar. And you'll get good at it. At first it's, ah, what am I doing? You know, am I doing this right or wrong? Your life will put your guitar way out of tune maybe. It sounds terrible. But that's what it takes to learn. And I'm sure there's a lot of uh, my friends and other people that have videos out there about tuning guitars. So you go to YouTube, go to your Google and type in guitar tuning and you'll probably see a whole bunch of videos. But I'm trying to give you my way right now and what suggest what I suggest to you is learning to tune there it's an art it really is and it's so important if you're not in tune you're just never going to sound good you have to get good at tuning and it takes time it doesn't happen in one week or in a month it happens over time that you get better and you find ways of tuning you want to be able to tune to other instruments, to a piano. If they give you a certain note, you want to be able to tune your guitar to that. If that guy playing the saxophone, you know, he wants you to tune to him, be in tune, well, maybe he'll, he'll hit you a note, and you've got to be able to find that note and tune your guitar to it. So you, you guys sound to be in tune together with other guitar players, the bass player. So tuning is important. There is standard tuning pitches, and the... Our, music system and that's what we want to learn we want to learn how how can we best get our guitar in tune and develop our ear to hear pitches to hear if we're in tune or out of tune if you're out of tune we use that word dissonance you'll have a dissonant it won't sound good it sound really bad but if you're in tune you'll have a consonant sound. It'll sound nice. The two notes that you're tuning will sound the same. They'll be in concert with each other. Okay, so there we go. Tuning, all right? So, this is your third week. I want to just add just a tiny, tiny bit. We've got our chromatic scale. Hopefully, you're starting to get that down-up picking going. I showed you a whole bunch of exercises to do with the playing the chromatic scale, the G string breaks the pattern. Down up picking now on your pick. You strictly alternate. 
alternate down up up down up down up down down you know you want to be able to down up down up down up down up down up down up you want to be able to say that as you're picking okay so that should be starting to get better if it's not you need to stay with these first couple two three lessons for maybe another extra week or so I don't know but if you have lessons with me you know remote lessons if you're on the subscription on patreon I can actually watch you and you can watch me and we can talk about your tuning and I can see where your skills are at I'll be able to look at it and see where your gray areas are where you're having problems how your hands are looking all those good things come from our in person or remote lessons where I can see you okay okay so the next thing that I wanted to add just a little bit is with your chords this week we did your G chord which was a three note chord and we did the four note chord version last week you got three notes or four notes same thing with your G7 with your first finger on the on the first fret a three note version and a four note version and then you went to the fifth fret with what I called a G9 and you strummed a three note version or a four note version and then the final chord with your second finger on the second fret what we called a G major 7 so you have a three note version and you have the four note version and we worked on strumming these chords down up now the new chord I'm going to show you today is very simply open G, open B, and E. Three notes. Oh wow. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to call that, I could call that a G6 and you don't need to know why, but I'm going to call that E minor. And that E minor, just those open strings, could be four strings also and that would actually be four strings would be what we call an E minor 7 so eventually you need to know these chord names okay so now I'm gonna have you start with the three note version and go open and then put your first finger down and then your third finger to the G chord and then maybe up to the G9, 5th fret, come back to the G chord on the 3rd fret, maybe the major 7 next with your 2nd finger, then the 1st finger G7, and then back to open. Now you can make up your own exercises. You could go E minor, F, which this adds your G7, and maybe just back and forth on those two. Then the, your little G chord. Third fret, first fret, open strings. Two hits on each. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And then remember, these can be four notes. I could go down, up, down, up, down, up, down. First finger, G7. Second finger, G major 7. Third finger, plain old G chord. Four strings. Four strings on the G9. Then we come back, third fret. Second finger, second fret. The G major 7. The G7 with the first finger. And then we're back to E minor. Four strings. What if I asked you just to go up, 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 up? Just upstroke. You're brushing. Your pick is brushing. Just like you're like you're painting something. Okay. You're brushing the strings. Notice my wrist and my arm flowing down, up, down, up, down, 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 down. 
and then I could go up, 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 three strings or four strings. I gotta be able to do either or. Down, up, down, up. I'm going down on four strings, up on four strings. So you wanna be hearing that you're getting that open D string in there. All open strings. Okay, so now the new chord this week, we're going back to three, three notes. It's putting your first finger on the B string. You know, your second string is your B string. So you're gonna put your first finger on the first fret. And this note, I'm gonna tell you, it's a C note, B, C. So open B, second string to first finger, B, C. B, C, new, <laughs> B, C. Okay, so when you press that first finger down, you wanna be up next to the fret, you're on the B string, and now you want to be able to clear. You wanna hit your G string, and now you wanna hit that first finger C note, and then you wanna be able to hit your open E. You wanna be clearly get three, three strings. See my finger? I'm gonna bring my fingers down just so you can see my first finger here, right? It's on the sec, not on the E string. That would be your F, that would be your G7 chord. This is your little C chord. So when I strum that little C chord, three strings, I can maybe practice going from C to G, which is your third fret. First fret, B string. Third fret, E string. How about down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. What if I go to the first fret? And then third fret, and then back to C. So I'm starting with the C. C. Little C chord, little G chord. Now I'm gonna go up to the fifth fret. Back to the third fret. And I'm gonna to go to the first fret. Maybe I'll go back to the third fret. I'm kind of making up my own little exercise. And then my C. So this is where you have to learn that you, when you press another note on another string, you've gotta, you've gotta be, have your first finger so it doesn't interfere with the top E string or low G string. That's why you've got the tip of your finger. That's why tips of fingers are so important. Okay, so we got the baby C. The B seeing you. I'll have to be seeing you next week, which will be your fourth lesson. So. Once again, I want to stress that you're learning how to learn, and that takes time. It doesn't happen in just a matter of weeks. You get better at learning how to learn this guitar and how to practice, and how to not do practice something wrong. But it takes time. It take, It's trial and error. Uh, this is why personal lessons are, are really important, you know, or that I'm able to do a remote lesson with you and we're able to see each other. That's really important. So this is something you might think about soon, maybe, or down the road a little bit. There's also an application I'm gonna tell you about that I'm gonna want you to eventually get on your computer and uh, we'll t we're not going to do that today. But another thing is, is being able to learn to practice with these videos. You know, you have them on your iPad maybe where you have a nice view or your computer. Or maybe you carry it around on your phone. But you need to be able to hear me well. And you need to be able to see me. And learning to use your, stop your, the video. And then work on something. And then restart it or re wind it go back so you have to get good at using your tools 
just like you're going to learn to use your tuning tools, your uh, your uh, tuning electronic tuners. We have to learn these things. But once you learn them, you know, you'll look back after a while and go, wow, that was really weird when I first tried to learn this, you know, but uh, now I've got it. It's working for me. It just, it takes time to learn. And you have to be patient. But you have to keep going back to it. You know, these skills are about your coordination of your fingers and your muscles and your fingers getting stronger. But it's not just the geographics here and using our rules of finger placement. You know, hug the frets, tips of fingers, and fingers stay in position. But we're trying to be mindful of all these things at the same time so that you develop a skill. So that you play this way all the time. And as you learn chords, you'll look at shapes, triangular shapes. You'll look at things on the guitar in shapes. And that's going to be really important when you learn chords, that you start to see shapes. You know? And um, that will be very helpful to you. Perseverance. You have to persevere. You have to really want to play guitar. And if you really do, and you listen to guitar players, and you listen to music, and you go, God, I want to play. It'd be so cool. Well, just wishing doesn't do it. You have to, you have to pay your dues. I like using that word because I'm from the blues school of guitar, right? You got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues in life and anything that you want to get good at or you want to understand. It's about maybe doing the wrong things and having issues and problems, but you overcome that by learning and practicing. Practicing is an art. And it doesn't happen by wishful thinking, but you can, if you keep in mind and be mindful of it, you want to learn to practice better all the time. How can I learn this? Is There's no magic, okay? I'll guarantee you there's no magic I can wish for you. Or wave a wand or, you know, uh, there's, there's none of that I can do. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, but... If you can get beyond the magic wish and make your mind, condition your mind to learn. There's psychology to learning uh, and neurological, uh, how your brain works, how it learns. These are things you might look at and study. Uh, do some searches on the psychology of learning music, uh, the psychology of learning. How does the mind, how does the brain learn and memorize? These are things that might, you know, interest you and, and you might, uh, might help you if, you if you know about some of these things. Maybe, I don't know. You know there's some guys that, and gals, uh, you know, uh, humans can be total idiots. And they can learn to play an instrument and be great, you know. But for the most of us, we have to study. We have to learn how to learn. We have to get better at learning. And... Uh, I can just tell you from all the experience, all the years I've had, that it gets better if you keep going at it. I had lots of guitar teachers from my early days. My first teacher uh, was a lady. She was a folk artist. Her name was Jan Johnson. And I was just a little boy. I was like a little five-year-old boy. And I would go to her house for lessons. And you know what? She was so kind and so good to me. I actually learned to read music. I had this little Alfred Noble book, and I would go through every week, and she'd put little stickers, you know, on it. I did good on that and kept going, and that was really great. And then I had other teachers that, you know, there were some that weren't so good that were kind of wasting my mom's money that she was paying, but we didn't know. But then I had good teachers. I had wonderful teachers. I had one of the legendary teachers, uh, Joe Fava, who had the Joe Fava guitar book course. He was actually a New York session guitarist that lived here in uh, the outskirts of Detroit. But it took me a long time to be on a waiting list to have him for a teacher. But I think I had him when I was about, oh, probably 11 or 12 years old. And I had him for a few years. And back in those days, I was playing guitar in uh, the uh, church services, the folk services that I, I was involved with, with the Lutheran church. 
and uh, the choirs I was singing in, and I had vocal lessons. My mom really saw that I loved music. Being at the age of, uh, I think, 9 or 10, I, in the 66, 67, I had a band. We were, we were called the Purple Plums, you know? If you look at bands, you know, we were inspired by the Beatles and, and the Monkees. We tried to be like them, you know? And we found that we loved music, you know? We had costume purple shirts made and, and uh, guitars, and the girls uh, chased us around uh, at school, and, and we thought that was great, and we made a couple bucks playing these little jamboree garage uh, gigs, and uh, we found, wow, we can make money. Guys, you know, hey, we got girls, we got money. Cow, we'll be millionaires soon, you know, which really never happened that way. But, wow, it was just all these cool things about learning how music affected us and affected others. And, you know, I learned that kind of young. And it, the heroes I had in guitar in those years, uh, as a child and uh, preteen, I, uh, eventually these great heroes that I love, the British guitar players and the black blues men, when I got to my 20s and I had studied more guitar and got to college and owned a music store and did all these wonderful other things, played in all these bands, blues bands and, and such later, I actually got a break and uh, in my 20s I was playing all over the world with all these heroes that were my heroes when I was younger. And, God, I never even thought back then I, I would meet these kind of guys, these people, you know. But here I was playing concerts, festivals, clubs all across the United States and Europe many, many times. And living with them on the road, traveling in a big old blues bus with Albert Collins and Big Twist and A.C. Reed. And it was just my dreams coming true. And uh, being in the blues band thing you know, it was was really really great. I met legendary people. I stayed in hotels with them. I uh, got to talk and laugh and cry with them all. So I was very fortunate in those ways. And in my later years, I had my own bands and did some recordings that weren't so successful. But I always taught guitar too. It was kind of funny. I as I got off the road and later in my later twenties and thirties, I was uh, really always working on my teaching and wanting to teach and learn more myself, but learning, I wanted to share these ideas. And, you know, I wanted my band players to be good musicians. So I, I figured I was teaching my fellows things. And uh, anyways, I'm kind of just wrapping off. I don't know, I'm a, got off on this today. Anyways, this was your third week lesson. And we've got 50 more lessons to come. I so appreciate your being a patron on, on the Patreon site for Guitar Zone and me. It's going to help me do things and survive to keep doing uh, more ideas I have and maybe some more recordings. And I even want to do a podcast sometime so, uh, so you can meet musicians and hear me interview people and oh, all these other good ideas I have. Anyways, I'm hoping the best for you. I'm hoping that you review the whole thing about review is so important. So you may back up to the first and second videos. You know, not a big deal. Go back. Keep working on that. Send me a text. Let me know. An email. Let me know how you're doing. Okay? So, hey, we're on a mission together. We're on these adventures. You're going to make discoveries. But hang in there. Don't give up. Music's too cool. It's too fun playing guitar. <laughs> I guarantee it. It's going to be great. All right. Well, this is Robert Noel at the Guitar Zone. <laughs> Fourth lesson coming up next week. Try to get in the habit of you've got to practice every day. If you practice in the morning and at night, two different sessions, that's good because you go through the day going, well, I did this in the morning, and then you, you review it when you before you go to bed, after dinner or something. So the times you practice can be good, but it's what you practice and how you practice and how diligent you are and that you practice the right things and just don't go off just clowning around because you could do that forever. Okay, I've said enough. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy your guitar.